Hey everyone, it's super early here in the UK, but we're going to cover this right away because last night this was playing in the background, I wasn't really paying attention, and all of a sudden I puckered up when I heard RFK Jr. talk about the chronic disease epidemic going on in the States. He was talking about children's health, chemicals in the water, estrogens, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, all this kind of stuff, super interesting territory he gets into. And the reason why I'm going to be reviewing this video over Asmongold's, which was the one that was playing, is because he's gotten away with using the footage. I think he may have tweaked the audio slightly. And well, I think my thinking is that if I react over the top of this, then I'll also be, be okay kind of thing. So um, the sound quality isn't perfect, but it's not that bad. Um, RFK has obviously got spasmodic dysmonia, I believe it's called, which affects his vocal cords. Um, so that's that explains that in case anybody doesn't know. Or he has asked to enlist me in his administration. Well, Trump. Uh, I'm yeah. speaking, of course, of Donald Trump. Yeah. Less than two hours after President Trump narrowly escaped assassination, Callie Means called me on my cell phone. I was then in Las Vegas. Callie is arguably the leading advocate for food safety, for soil regeneration and for ending the chronic disease epidemic that is destroying America's health and ruining our economy. Mm. Galli has exposed the insidious corruption at the FDA, the NIH, the HHS, and the USDA that has caused oh. the epidemic. <laughs> Galli had been working on and off for my campaign, advising me on those subjects since the beginning. And those subjects have been my primary focus for the last 20 years. I was delighted when Kelly told me that day that he had also been. You've got people writing here, Cedo, Cedo is in the comments. <laughs> advising President Trump. He told me President Trump was anxious to talk to me about chronic disease and other subjects. Interesting. And to explore avenues of cooperation. He asked if I would take a call from the president. President Trump telephoned me a few minutes later. And I met with him the following day. A few weeks later, I met again with shot. President Trump and his family members <laughs> and close advisors in Florida. In a series of long, intense discussions, I was surprised to discover that we are aligned on many key issues. While working together on the existential issues oh upon my God. which we are in concordance, but we are aligned with each other on other key issues like ending the forever wars ending the childhood disease epidemic, securing the border, protecting freedom of speech, unraveling the corporate capture of our regulatory agencies, getting the U.S. intelligence agencies out of the business of propagandizing and censoring and surveilling Americans and interfering with our elections. Suspending my candidacy is a hard rending decision for me, but I'm convinced that it's the best hope are ending the Ukraine war and ending the chronic disease epidemic that is eroding our nation's vitality from the inside. Yeah. And for finally protecting free speech, I feel a moral obligation to use this opportunity to save millions of American children yeah. above all things. In case some of you don't realize how dire the condition is of our children's health and chronic disease in general, I would urge you to view Dr. Carlson's recent interview with Kelly Means well, and his sister, mad. Dr. Casey <laughs> Means, who is the top graduate of her class at Stanford Medical School. This is an issue that affects all of us far more directly and urgently than any culture war issue. Agreed. And all the other issues that we obsess on and that are tearing apart our country. Yeah. This is the most important issue. Facts. Therefore, it has the potential to bring us together. So let me share a little bit about why I believe it's so urgent. Today, two thirds, we, we pay, we spend more on healthcare than any country on earth, twice what they pay in Europe. And their health is in the worst position. And yet we have the worst health outcomes mm. of any nation in the world. We're about 79th in What could health be the reason for that? Cost. Corruption and money. These people have lied to us about the history the guidelines, what's good, what's bad. You know, everybody gets sick and then we, there's just a magic pill, Ozempic. It's all garbage. It's very, very 
deleterious for human health outcomes and it's abundantly clear. Costa Rica and Nicaragua and Mongolia and other countries. Mongolia. Nobody has a chronic disease burden like we have. And what during could be the, the reason? COVID epidemic, we had the highest body count of any country in the world. We had 16% of the COVID deaths and we only have 4.2% of the world's population. And <laughs> CDC says that's because we are the sickest people on earth. We yeah. have the highest chronic disease rate yeah. on earth. And the average American We're in a who died nation. from COVID had 3.8 right. chronic diseases. So these were people who had immune system collapse, yeah. who had mitochondrial yeah, dysfunction. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And no other country has anything like this. Hamburger Two Americans. Two-thirds of American adults and children suffer from chronic health issues. 50 years ago, that number was less than 1%. So we've gone from 1% to, uh, to 66%. I don't think many people have questioned this because they're born into the world that they know. That's all they know. They don't really question it too much. They think that this is just reality. This is how, the, how it goes. We all need glasses. We all need braces. We get, you know, a little cyst here and there and we'll, we'll have fat on our liver. That's just being a human, right? It's like, no, wrong. <laughs> you're eating the wrong stuff. You're drinking the wrong stuff. You're living a dangerous lifestyle. In America, 74% of Americans are now overweight or obese. Nope. <laughs> and 50% of our children, 120 years ago, when somebody was obese, here we they go. Were, uh, they were sent to the circus. There were, <laughs> there were case reports oh, wow. on about them. Obesity was almost unknown in Japan. <laughs> childhood. Hey man, someone has to say it. It's the truth. The obesity circus. rate is three percent compared to fifty percent. Oh here. shit! Half of Americans have pre-diabetes or type two diabetes. When my uncle was president, I was a boy. Juvenile oh, diabetes God. was effectively non-existent. A typical pediatrician would see one case of diabetes during his entire career, a 40 or 50 year career. Mm -hmm. That's because people these days are just consuming way too many carbohydrates all day long. They wake up, they need a sweet coffee, and then they have their breakfast cereal, which is basically starch, which is metabolized as glucose. It's sprayed to death with glyphosate. And then you're having fruit with that, which is more sugar, even worse. You're making juices and purees out of it. You're drinking that down. The fructose goes straight to your liver. You know, it's all this glycation, basically, elevated blood glucose. The best way to achieve that is to consume carbohydrates all day long. And that's the typical lifestyle. That's the typical standard Western diet, certainly in the States, you know. And it's even more highly processed. There's extra chemicals going on in the, in the products. Man, you know, it's a sad, sad situation. Today, one out of every three kids who walks through his office door is diabetic or pre-diabetic. And the mitochondrial disorder that caused diabetes also causing uh, uh, Alzheimer's, which Type is three. now classified as diabetes. And it's costing like this country new, more right? than our military yeah, budget good. every year. There's been an explosion of neurological illnesses that yep. I never saw as a kid. ADD, ADHD. Yeah, no, that's super new. I think it's like last like three months. Our, I think it's a bit older than that, but it is, it's very, very new. Epilepsy, ASD, Asperger's, autism. Yeah. In the year 2000, the autism rate was 1 in 1,500. Now autism rates in kids are 1 in 36, according to CDC. No, it's 1 in, it's one in 3. About this. <laughs> 1 in every yeah. 22 kids in California has shocking. autism. This is shocking. I mean, we know that a lot of these kids that suffer with autism, they're deficient in things like carnitine, choline, DHA, EPA, things that are abundant in animal products. In fact, you won't get these things in plants. You know, you won't find docosahexaenoic acid in any plant. And, and you'll have these vegans allude to, oh, ALA, you know, we, we get ALA, we get that in flax seeds. It's like you're not going to convert that very well. You're not going to absorb it very well. And then you're most likely going to deplete it with your poor lifestyle and your lifestyle choices. This is why so many kids have autism. I genuinely believe that all the time you've got these couples that go vegan and then they make a baby. It's like, good luck with that. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. No, I, it's higher. This is a crisis yeah. that seventy-seven percent of our kids cannot are are too disabled to serve in the United States military. Oh, man. Yeah, 
what is happening to our country he, and why is yeah. this in the headlines every single day he's cooking there's nobody man. else yeah. in the world that is experiencing this he's this cooking. is only happening in america it's the truth i love it it's awesome america oh, about man. 18 percent and by the way you know uh, the there has been no change in diagnosis, which the industry sometimes likes to say. There has been no change in screening. This is a change in incidence. In my generation, 70-year-old hmm. men, uh, it, the, the autism rates are about 1 in 10,000. In my kids' generation, 1 in 34. I'll repeat, yeah. in California, 1 in 22. Why are we letting this happen? Why are we allowing we gotta, this to happen to our greedy scumbags, the powers that be, unfortunately? Our children. No more social These media. These are the most precious <laughs> assets that we have in this country. How can we let this happen? California, bro. About 18% what is going on in California? of American teens now have fatty liver disease. That's yeah. like one out of every five. Yeah, one in five children in the West kind of thing. They have fat on their liver. Why is that? They don't drink alcohol. What's going on? Oh, well, we're told to take fruits, right? Carbohydrates and just squeeze the fructose out of it. So now the fructose goes straight to the liver and that causes problems. Not, hence, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's just terrible what's going on. People have no clue about nutrition. We shouldn't be eating fruits all year round. We shouldn't be squeezing the juice out of fruits and making purees and smoothies out of it. But this is what your doctor will tell you. This is what a dietitian or a nutritionist will suggest. Energy and vitamins, it's like, no. That disease, Ooh. when I was a kid, only affected late stage alcoholics who were elderly. Mm. Cancer rates are skyrocketing in the young and the old. Yep. Young. One in two of us will get cancer now. And this is all due to dysregulation and function of mitochondria. You know, we can damage it in many ways, smoking, drinking alcohol, but seed oils, which are in all highly processed foods, carbohydrates, sugar, 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 all the time. It slowly does what cyanide does. We're damaging our mitochondria, and then people wind up with all sorts of chronic disease. Adult cancers are up 79%. One in four American women is on antidepressant medication. 40% of teens I know some. have a mental, teens and a mental <laughs> health diagnosis. And 15% of high schoolers are on Adderall, and half a million children on SSRI. What percentage wow. of streamers are so on Adderall? So what's causing this suffering? Diet and lifestyle. It's as simple as that. I was depressed before I went carnival. After three weeks of eating only beef, butter, bacon and eggs, was no longer depressed. Acne went on my back. Energy up. Sleep better. No acid reflux. Clear outlook. Brain fog gone. I've been on this diet for two years. I have no issues. I'll name two culprits. First Social and the worst media. is ultra processed food. Yeah. About 70% of American children's diet is ultra processed. That means industrial manufactured in a factory. These foods consist primarily of processed sugar, ultra processed grains, and seed oils. Nailed it. 100%. I couldn't agree more. There's also additional chemicals and things like that. But grains are, you're eating seeds. Seeds are toxic parts of plants. Now, yes, there are some fruits that can be advantageous for us to eat in the winter if we were living in a wild setting you know we germinate the seeds and we can get well we can gain fat that's why <laughs> that's why we ate fruit is to help us gain fat for the winter but winter never comes now and in the west all these people every single day without question just you know soda breakfast cereal grains in the morning highly processed foods which contain even more sugar and chemicals estrogens preservatives emulsifiers stabilizers binders there's like a hundred different words in there that describe oh, sugar. There's sugar in there. There's like a diff hundred different words that mean that there's sugar in that product. And the seed oils, which are just destroying everybody's health. It's terrible. The laboratory scientists, who form, many of whom formerly worked for the cigarette industry, which purchased all the big food companies mm -hmm. in the 1970s and 80s, yeah. <clears throat> deployed thousands of scientists to figure out chemicals, new chemicals, to make the food more addictive of course and these ingredients MSG didn't and exist 100 years ago they humans aren't by same goes for seed oils it's like the last 100 years you know biologically adapted to eat them hundreds of these chemicals yeah. are now banned in europe 
but yeah. ubiquitous he, he's, in America. No, he's right about this. Yeah. yeah. Money, right. money, money. The second culprit is toxic chemicals in our food, in our medicine, yeah. in our environment. I had no idea about this until like Pesticides, two years ago. food additives pharmaceutical drugs and toxic ways permeate every cell of our bodies. The assault on our <clears throat> children's cells and hormones is unrelenting. Yeah. And name just one problem. Many of these chemicals increase estrogen. Yep. <laughs> because young children are yeah. ingesting so many. That's what's happening though. We're, we're eating estrogens. They're spraying grains with estrogens. That's what glyphosate and atrazine are. They interfere with the life cycle of the bug which is why they make great pesticides. And if you're a kid, you know, in the morning and you want your breakfast, there's a little friendly animal character on the front of the box and there's a little toy inside and, oh, can I have that one, mum? Can I have that one? And, yep, yeah, next morning the kid's eating glyphosate. And what is it anyway? It's just sugar. You're eating sugar and glyphosate. More people need to know this stuff and this is why this is, this is such a great thing that he's actually coming out and speaking like this. We have these hormone disruptors. Oh, America's shit. America's puberty rate is now occurring at age 10 to 13, wow. which is six years earlier wow. yeah. than girls were reaching puberty in 1900. Oh, Our man. Our country He's has going the earliest there. puberty rates of any continent on the earth. And no, this isn't because of better nutrition. This is not normal. Yeah. Breast cancer is also estrogen driven and it now strikes one in eight women. We are mass poisoning boys. all of our children and our adults. See free balling, we're top, he, he got considering top the problem. grievous Clear. human cause of this tragic epidemic of chronic disease, it seems almost if he free crass balled this, that'd be damage nuts. it does to our economy. Uh, but I'll Imagine say raw dogging it this. is crippling the nation's finances. When my uncle was mm. president, our country has spent zero dollars on chronic disease. That's another thing that a lot of people miss. They think, you know, oh, I've heard this whole vegan thing so great for health and the planet, the environment, animal deaths, which it's not. It's the complete opposite. But they don't think about this stuff. They go vegan, then they get really sick. Well, the more people that are sick, the more that we're taxing the healthcare sector. So it's just, it's from every single angle. They, they all go hand in hand. Today, government healthcare spending is mo the almost is all from crime boys. Disease. And it's double the military budget. And it is the fastest budget, a growing budget yeah. item in the federal budget. And chronic disease costs more to the economy as a whole, costs at least $4 trillion, five times our military budget. And, um, and that's a 20% drag on everything we do and everything we aspire to. Mm -hmm. Poor and minority communities suffer mm -hmm. disproportionately. People who worry about DEI or about you know bigotry of any kind, mm -hmm. this dwarfs anything. Yeah. We are poisoning the poor. We are po yep. systematically poisoning <laughs> he right. minorities across this country. He's, no, he's Industry right. Industry lobbyists yeah. have made sure that most of the food stamp lunch program about don't worry about DEI, we're killing them. <laughs> 70 or 77 percent of school lunches are processed foods. Bro, these there bullet are no points are crazy. There's nothing that you would want to eat. Off to school, take your poisons, have a nice day. How was your day? How was your poison? It's so sad. We are just poisoning the poor citizens, and that's why they have the highest chronic disease. Oh my God burden of anybody any demographic in our country and the highest in the world the same food industry lobbied to make sure that nearly all agricultural subsidies i didn't expect this to go, go so to hard crops yeah. that are the feedstock of processed food industry it's insane these policies are destroying small farms and they're destroying our soils yeah. we need to get rid of monocropping this is this is another disaster that is happening when humans intervene like this it's not progress it's regress and essentially what they're doing is they're just knocking down rainforest and killing everything, including the soil. The soil is deficient. The soil is depleted. It's just dead. Everything is dead. And so they have to spray fixed ammonium nitrate on this stuff just to allow the plants to grow. And now when they're grown, they're not nutrient dense. They don't contain a lot of nutrients. They didn't anyway, really. You know, they don't contain B12, B6, D3, K2, heme iron, retinol, carnosine, carnosine, DHA, EPA, COQ10. It goes on and on and on. For hundreds of thousands of years, humans 
and bovines, aurochs, oryx, ancient aurochs, have roamed the earth. There was no problem. That's why we're here, right? <laughs> There's no issue there. So they'll take a cow and they'll put it in a concentrated animal feedlot operation and wonder why it's getting sick because it's now no longer eating grass, which is their species appropriate diet or alfalfa, clover, all this kind of stuff. Now they're eating corn. Now they're out of the sun. Now they're cooped up in a weird environment and they get sick. So then we inject them with antibiotics, which creates even more methane. It's just so backward. All you need to do is stick the cows out on pasture and there's this natural biogenic carbon cycle. The methane is recycled carbon. It's like, what is going on? It's really, really not rocket science. We can change it very, very quickly. America can get healthy again. To do that, we need to do three things. The First, exercise. we need to root out the corruption in our health agencies. Yeah, absolutely. Second, we need to change incentives in our health care system. And third, we need to inspire Americans to get healthy again. 80% of NIH grants go to people who have conflicts of interest. These, mm. these are the people Virtually everybody who says, you know, Joe Biden um, just appointed a new panel to NIH to, uh, to decide the food recommendations. And they're all people who are from the industry. Yeah. They're all people who are from the processed food companies. There's a lot of shady, corrupt history behind all of this stuff. I mean, if anyone knows about Ansel Keys, they'll understand why the guidelines were what they were. He vilified saturated fats, cholesterol and all this kind of stuff. It's things like sugar and seed oils that cause the damage, which is why the cholesterol is there. It's there to band-aid up the damage. It's actually protective. <laughs> and then you've got the corrupt history with John D. Rockefeller, Andrew Carnegie. Between them and Abraham Flexner and his brother and the Flexner Report, they, they pretty much took over in a hostile way the whole medical system and healthcare. And it was kind of like, you do it our way or it's the highway. And it was all allopathic medicine. And allopathic medicine, by definition, means it will address your symptoms and completely ignore root cause. And this is the world that we live in now. Eat carbohydrates, eat sugar, eat plants, 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 red meat bad, eggs bad, fiber good, drugs good. <laughs> it's just like, it's a joke. They're deciding what Americans, you know, here is healthy mm. and the recommendations on the food pyramid and the rec and what goes to our school lunch programs, which go what go to. Don't take the, away my chicken know, the program, nuggets, bro. The, I would eat those uh, every the, the day Swiss in program, school. The, those were good. Food stamp programs. They're all corrupted. Yeah. yeah, they all come from the same corrupt food guidelines. Hospitals, our troops, dietitians, nutritionists, nurses. It's all corrupt. And it's because they all base it on the corrupt guidelines. All the nutrients required for optimal human health is found within fatty red meat, whole eggs, fish. You know the stuff that humans actually have to eat if they're in a wild setting? If you go out there right now and you try to survive, good luck on the plants. Good luck finding any edible plants. Around here, you might stumble across some blackberries. Well, blackberries don't contain a lot of nutrients. People think that they do. Oh, it's a fruit. It's full of the nutrients. No, it's not. Where are your fatty acids? Where are your proteins? Where are B12, B6, D3, K2? important nutrients, these key nutrients absolutely required for, to, to be optimally healthy. Where are they? In the plants, they, they don't exist. And so we've been lied to about so much in such a severe way. We're all brainwashed and indoctrinated, walking around in the matrix. Conflicted individuals, these agencies, the FDA, you offer a condition what? of obesity that is completely preventable and barely oh, even existed 100 years ago. Mm. And 74% of Americans are obese. Oh. The cost, if all of them took their Ozempic prescription, is $3 <clears throat> trillion dollars a year. $3 this trillion. Dollars. A, Another magic pill, a pharmaceutical. Woohoo. A drug that is made by Novo Nordisk. The biggest company in Europe is a Danish company, and the Danish government does not recommend it. It recommends change in diet to treat yeah. obesity and exercise. Eat the proper human diet, a species appropriate diet for humans. That's meat. If you're in the wild and you want to survive as an animal, which we are, we're mammals, we need to eat meat. That's where the nutrients are. If you think about a reality show where they go and try and survive in the wild, if they don't catch animals, they get sick or they get taken off the program. It's like, why don't people realize this? All the plants, the plants, where are they then? Get dropped off on an island. Oh, there's some coconuts maybe. Good luck with that. You know, where are enough of the plants even to just get you through? Because <laughs> most people adopt a vegan diet, they don't even last very long. And, and that's in the modernity where we have vessels shipping all these different 
fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes from all different parts of the globe so that you can have all these different varieties on your plate. And it's just so unrealistic because, like I'm saying, you know, if I went out there right now and tried to survive, I would have to eat meat if I didn't want to die. But then again, all these vegans, they don't care about nature. Um, they kind of deny it like it's not important. Oh, appeal to nature fallacy. No, you can stick fallacy on the end of something, doesn't make it so. There's a reason why nature is important, natural, what is highly processed, something is, that is no longer organic, something that has been intervened with over and over by human beings, as if we know better, as if we are smarter than our human body. Our body is a genius compared to all of the minds put together on this planet. It's so complicated, yet we think, oh, you know, oh, your LDL is elevated. Oh, I'll create a drug to lower that because I'm smarter. It's like, you're an idiot. Nice. That's a good one. And in our country, the that's, recommendation now is for Ozempic to children at age six. That's, oh um, man, that's Nova a good is the biggest company in Europe and virtually its entire value Jesus. is based wow. upon its projections of what it's going to sell, wow. the Ozempic it's going to sell to America. And, uh, and we, we have the food lobbyists have a bill in front of Congress today that is backed by the White House, backed by Vice President Harris and President Biden. To, to allow this He's going to be assassinated for sure. This dollar cost that is going to bankrupt our country. We, for a fraction of that amount, we could buy organic food for every American family, three meals a day, and eliminate diet. There is no such thing as organic plants. It's impossible. They're all man-made inventions. If you look at the wild type, their natural ancestors, they don't even closely resemble what we eat today. You look at an ancient cucumber, look at like wild almonds, bitter almonds, stuff that would kill you. Stuff that make you very, very sick. But we've taken bitter genes out. We've increased carbohydrate content. They're big and sweet and colorful. Wow, they're so healthy. Look what's happened. Diabetes altogether. We're, we're going to bring healthy food back to school lunches. Oh. We're going to stop subsidizing the worst foods with our agricultural subsidies. Yeah. We're going to get toxic chemicals out of our food. We're going to reform the entire so, food so, system. That's not easy. And for that, we need new leadership in Washington. Because unfortunately, well, the Democrats... Soda, the though, right? <laughs> that's when Gold loves his soda. <laughs> He's starting to stress about them taking his soda away. That's hilarious. The big food producers, big pharma, keep and soda. big ag, <laughs> which are among the DNC's please, major donors. Please, please donor. keep soda. Just a quick note on soda. I mean... These drinks, it's funny, obviously they're sweet and they're addictive. They put things in there to make them that way. They're very appealing. They've got these strange colours to them, you know, like um, fluorescent colours. It's just crazy. But you drink this stuff because you're thirsty, but you don't realise it's a diuretic. And so then you crave more and then it's just this vicious loop. Soda, 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 soda. And you're just stripping the electrolytes out of your system, just destroying your mitochondria. Um, yeah, Asmongold, please, if you ever see this, Please cut back on your soda, mate, because I do. You are a fellow human. I do care about you. I do care about you as a human. So just take care of yourself. Vice President Harris has expressed no interest in addressing this issue. Four more years of democratic rule will complete the consolidation of corporate and neocon power. Nope. And our children will be the ones who suffer most. Mm. I got involved with chronic disease 20 years ago, not because I chose to or wanted to. It was essentially thrust upon me. It was an issue that should have been central to the environmental movement. I was a central leader at that time, but it was widely ignored by all the institutions, including the NGOs who should have been protecting our kids mm. against toxins. It was an orphaned issue and I had a weakness. It's just everywhere now. It's all tainted and, and sabotaged and compromised. It's just estrogens and chemicals in our water now, you know? In Florida, you've got DDT still circulating in some of the water and I think that's now affected the alligator population over there. This stuff, we can't just change things and expect to, to be okay. And this is why it's so important what he's talking about our children. They will suffer the most because we are laying this foundation for them when they grow up and it's, it's only going to get worse unless we intervene. For orphans, I watched generations of children <clears throat> get sicker and sicker. I had 11 siblings and I had seven kids myself. Jesus, I was Christ. conscious of what was happening in their classrooms and to their friends. And I watched yeah. these sick kids, these damaged kids, these fat kids in that generation, almost True. all of them are damaged and nobody in power seemed to care or to even notice for 19 years. 
I prayed every morning that God would put me in a position to end this calamity. The chronic disease crisis was one of the primary reasons for my running for president, along with ending the censorship in the Ukraine. This is a good man right here. Or it's the reason I've made the heart-wrenching decision to suspend my campaign mm -hmm. and to support President Trump. His decision is agonizing nope. for me because of Damn. the difficulties it causes. He said it. My wife and my children and my friends. But I have the certainty that this is what I've meant to do. And that certainty gives me internal peace, yeah. even in storms. If I'm given the chance to fix the chronic disease crisis and reform our food production, I promise that within two years, we will watch chronic disease burden lift dramatically. Yeah, come down. We will make Americans healthy again. Hmm. Within four years, America will be a healthy country. We will be stronger, no more, more resilient. People. Ultimately, the future, however it happens, is in God's hands and in the hands of the American voters and those yeah. of President Trump. If President Trump is elected and honors his word, the vast burden of chronic disease that now demoralizes and bankrupts the country will disappear. Yeah. This is a spiritual journey for me. Honors his I word. I reached my decision through deep prayer through hard-nosed logic, and I ask myself, what choices must I make to maximize my chances to save America's children and restore national health? I felt that if I refused this opportunity, I would not be able to look myself in the mirror, knowing that I could have saved lives yeah. of countless children and reversed this country's chronic disease epidemic. I'm 70 years old. I may have a decade to be effective. I can't imagine that President Harris, a uh, President Harris, would allow me or anyone to solve these these dire problems. After eight years of President Harris, any opportunity for me to fix the problem will be out of my reach forever. Hmm. President Trump has told me that he wants this to be his legacy. Awesome. I'm choosing to believe that this time he will follow through. His son, his biggest donors, his closest friends, and all support this objective. My joining the uh, Trump campaign will be a difficult sacrifice for my wife and children, but worthwhile if there's even a small chance of, of saving these kids. Yeah. Ultimately, the only thing that will save our country and our children is if we choose to love our kids more than we hate each other. So true. So true. That's why I launched my campaign wow. to unify America. What a beautiful way to put it. Uh, my dad and uncle made such an enduring mark on the character of our nation. That's a good one. Not so much because of any He's had some really good ones on this. They promoted, but because they he were has. able to inspire profound love for our country and to fortify our sense of ourselves as a national community held together by ideals. They were able to put their love into the intentions and hearts of ordinary Americans and to unify a national populist movement of Americans, blacks and whites, Hispanics, urban and rural Americans, they inspired affection and love and high hopes and a culture of kindness that continue to ra radiate among Americans in, from their memory. That's the spirit on which I ran my campaign and that I intend to bring into the campaign of President Trump. Instead of vitriol and polarization, I will appeal to the values that unite us, the goals that we could achieve if only we weren't at each other's throats. The most unifying theme for all, all Americans is that we all love our children if yeah. we all unite around that issue now didn't we just talk about how they're we all fat though? give them the protection <laughs> the health and the future that they deserve yeah. thank you all very much oh, man. that was great <laughs> man yeah so uh let's go ahead let's summarize yeah wow someone needed to say it i feel like i've been waiting a long time just to hear someone 
in a position of authority speak along these lines. And it's not like, oh, he's onto something. No, he nailed it. You know, I don't, maybe he doesn't know exactly what humans should be eating, like ratios, proportions, all this kind of stuff. He probably still thinks that vegetables and fruits are actually healthy, which they're not terrible. You know, if you're going to eat them when they're local, seasonal and ripe, it's not the end of the world for healthy, robust people. Um, but he's certainly he's certainly speaking a lot of truth in terms of the compromised system that we live in and how everything is tainted now with chemicals and estrogens and poisons that yet the processed grains, the seed oils, the excess sugar is kind of the be all and end all when it comes to chronic disease in human beings and this epidemic that we find ourselves in. And oh, what a beautiful thing to say, you know, that that's exactly how we should be looking at it. That's how we should be thinking, you know, to protect our children, to protect the new generations that are coming up because we are laying the foundation for, for their lives. And it's not fair. It's not, it's just misanthropic that the way the world is, the way the system works right now is disgusting and it needs to change. And so I really hope RFK Jr. succeeds on his mission. I do hope you've enjoyed watching. Please like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.